welcome you all to the month of October and the very first Sunday. <laughs> Glory be to God. Every one of us will see the end of this year and enter the new year triumphantly in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm aware many have joined us virtually, so if you don't mind, on their behalf, let's give the Lord a big round of applause as we welcome them. The month of October, as we have announced, every year we devote the month of October, all the teachings, all the services, focus on families. And so as we begin the series of teachings, you know, uh, for this month, I want to encourage you to be part of everything. Because when the family is healthy, the church is healthy. And until your family is healthy, you are not really healthy. And God is teaching all of us this month how to make our homes heaven here on earth. There is no expert when it comes to relationship, particularly marital relationship. We are all learning, you know, on the feet of the master so we can, you know, improve and get things better in our lives and in our homes. In any case, we have the arch enemy, the devil who is not resting. He's trying to pull down any marriage that is available. He will not find your own in the name of Jesus. Now I'm believing the almighty God that many of our singles will get connected this month in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, say a very loud amen. So invite your friends, invite your neighbors, make sure everybody is aware that God is doing something great in families through our church in the name of Jesus. All right, so Agape is our theme for the entire month. And this first service, we will be sharing very briefly the message titled, Two of a Kind in Christ. Two of a Kind in Christ. Of course, you know that we have been studying the entire year the book of Acts of the Apostles. And this morning, the text will be from Acts chapter 18. We we'll read verses 1, 2, and 3. Acts 18, 1 to 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them. So, because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and walked for by occupation they were tent makers beloved brethren don't let anybody deceive you marriage is a good thing because it is of god and god is good all the times whatever he does is good genesis 2 verse 18 genesis 2 18 the bible says and the lord god said it is not good that the man should be alone. Of everything that God created, the loneliness of man was the only thing described as not good. And so God instituted marriage and he said, I will make him and help meet for him. Proverbs 18 verse 22. Proverbs 18 verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. I know this of a fact and I, I know it for my life. I know it for so many brethren that have shared testimony. I mean, I didn't, you know, have a car before, um, you know, I got married in 1996, February 17. For many of my colleagues in the bank, in the group where I worked, the corporate banking group, all of them, you know, had at least one car. I was the only one without a car. I have two brothers I was helping, you know, to, to get out of university. So if I had, a, you know, car to the issue, I will, I will be truly challenged. So I didn't have a car. There are many things that I didn't have as well. But then that was February. I got married in February by August, six months after. <laughs> the Almighty God had opened a door that I didn't even knock. I didn't apply to work for a company called Slumbridge. They were just looking for somebody with my profile. Somebody spoke for me and then they invited me for an interview. I've shared some of these stories before. I remember the beginning of that August was a convention. My wife and I, we went in um, uniform. We were wearing the same, <laughs> with the same clothing. I think one of the dresses we wore at the wedding ceremony. And I remember we had finished all the money we took to come. So he called to us and wait a minute. How are we going to get home? There's, there was no transport money. And we were standing, you know, just on the road. 
And then somebody saw us and picked us, dropped us at one point, and then we, we came down. Another fellow saw us, picked us. There are three people who picked us before we got home. <laughs> but by September, when I resumed, because God opened favor, even before I got my first pay, the fellow who interviewed me had approved about a million naira. That was a lot of money in 1996. It was so big that our first car was Mercedes Benz. So when you find a wife, you find a good thing, and you obtain favor from the Lord. If you have not experienced favor, your day of favor has finally come. Let me hear your loudest amen. If marriage is good, how come all the pains and sorrows in many homes? Because there are many troubles. As a pastor, I counsel a lot. Most of my time is spent counseling on the subject of marriage. It's the same reason we had to start the marriage school. Every 13 seconds, there is one divorce in America. That equates to 277 divorces per hour. 6,646 divorces per day, 46,523 divorces per week, and 2,2.419 2 divorces per year. If marriage is such a good thing, how come 2.5 million divorces happen in America every year? Well, this, the institution of marriage is not the problem, but the individuals involved. Marriage is not the problem. Getting married without a vision is a big problem. All marriages have a time limit. If you enter them for the wrong reasons, with your eyes closed. If you marry someone, hoping it will improve things, you might as well set your timer. The second you say, yes, I do. Because it's a time bomb that's going to explode sooner than later. Getting married without a vision for your marriage may lead to the two ending in a ditch. Matthew 15, verse 14. Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Proverbs 29, 18a. Proverbs 29, 18, the A says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. You know, Leah married Jacob for customs, for tradition. She knew she was not loved. The man didn't hide it. I mean, read this story. Genesis 29, 25. He was waiting for Rachel. And then the father-in-law presented, you know, the elder sister. He said, well, in our place, the, the second cannot get married before the first. And the man didn't hide. He said, I don't love this one. The one I love is Rachel. In fact, the Bible says that Leah was hated. There's a difference between I don't love this one and I hate this one. Leah was hated by the husband and ridiculed by the sister. How does anybody with his eyes or her eyes open enter into a marriage where the man says, you know, I don't love you, but you know what? If you want to be here, you can be here, but I don't love you. Doing the right thing for the wrong reason is costly. And getting married without a clear vision will bring tears from the eyes. Aquila and Priscilla, the couple in our text, were highly celebrated couple in the early church. Listen to what Paul said about them in Romans 16, 3 and 4. Romans 16, 3 and 4. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have... For my life, lay down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Clearly, this couple had a clear vision for their marriage and their union. They did not come together for frivolities, not for the fun of it, but for a purpose which they both agreed on and ready to die for. Paul said they laid down their necks. The wife wasn't angry with the husband about it. They agreed. Daddy Joe told the story. I've heard him say it many times, but he said it on Friday during the Holy Ghost service. A newlywed who came to Africa. They go to Africa as missionaries, and they arrive at a leper colony. And they said, we want to minister to the people 
the lepers in the, this colony. The gate man said, nobody goes in who comes out. You go in there, you are not going to come out. We want to preach to them. The man said, can't you hear me? I open this thing, you go in, you are not coming out. We throw food to them. They looked at themselves. The husband told the wife, what do you think? The wife said, God said, go. He didn't say anything about come. And the husband said, that's true. So you're in agreement? He said, of course. They told the gate man, open the thing for them. They went inside. They stayed and preached to all the lepers. They all gave their life to Christ. They lived there and died with them. Now, if we take two people of a kind who have a purpose for their marriage and they knew exactly what they came together for, why they came together, so it wasn't a struggle for them. Amos 3.3, 3, can two work together except they be agreed? What's the purpose for your marriage? Why are you married to that woman? Why are you married to that, to that man? If you don't have a purpose for your marriage that is bigger than the two of you, then just anything can pull you apart. Until you find a purpose for your staying together as a couple, anything will pull you apart. Something bigger than you. Something you will say, well, if for this thing, I will be here because we have a purpose. A lady, a young lady came, a single, you know, that wanted to get married. And I asked, why, will, why do you want to get married? And she looked at me, Pastor, what do you mean? I'm already, I think, 28 years old. I said, okay, is that the only reason? He said, I want to have children. I said, oh, very good, how many do you want? She said, three. Why do you still want to get married? Said, ah, what about what I've just said? I said, okay, in that wise, you will get married, you have three children, and after that, you are going to divorce. Ah, I said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, because the reason for you, for you getting married will have been accomplished. Why do you want to stay in the marriage? You want to get married, you are married. You want to have three children, you have three children. Why? Tell me why you should remain. If trouble comes, why should you remain? Well, you have achieved your purpose of being in the marriage. Do you have a purpose a vision for your marriage that is bigger than the two of you. Aquila and Priscilla were two of a kind in Christ because their marriage was Christ-centered and mission-focused. In must 3, 3, can two work together except they be agreed. If you are headed south and your spouse not, it is clear you will both be lost and you will go with whoever finds you. If you marry someone who does not know where he is headed, he will pull you in every direction until you are both lost. If you marry someone whose vision is only for his personal life and no vision for the marriage, you will become a tool of accomplishing his goal and you will be dumped when you are no longer needed or when you are devalued to nothing. Be careful spinsters, be careful bachelors, who you get married to. I think it was a preacher that was saying over the weekend that instead of a woman saying, where do you work? The person wants to get married to, where do you work? Or what, what, what kind of car are you using? That, those are wrong questions. If a man says, I want to marry you, ask him, where are you going? Because if you know where you are, he is going, you know whether you can follow him. We ask all the wrong questions. When, when, where are you from? What does it matter? Where is this fellow going? Does he know? Because you marry him, he will take you to where he's going. If he's going to hell, he's going to take you to hell. The two in a marriage must develop a vision for the marriage. A common purpose rooted in God that drives your entire lives. It will surprise you how many homes where people, they are married, but they don't know where they are going. Everybody just doing whatever. Even when the challenges of life are pulling you apart, the common purpose in God will continue to bring you together. If you have a common purpose in God, even if you have challenges, that purpose that is bigger than the two of you will be bringing you together. Aquila and Priscilla settled the purpose for their marriage before coming together as evidence in the way they live their lives. In fact, 1 Corinthians 16, 19, 1 Corinthians 16, 19, the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. There's a church in their house. There was no argument about what this couple stood for. 
your own marriage what is the purpose of coming together do you have a vision where is that man going are you able to follow him Leah married Jacob for customs she knew she was not loved why are you married to your spouse what vision are you fulfilling together what's the purpose for your marriage that binds you together do you know the two of a kind in Christ may have different personalities but they have a common purpose and their differences help to achieve the purpose my wife and I we are very different I'm sure you know by now but the differences help you know it's a synergy it complements one another the two of a kind in Christ may be very different in how they see things but the two we come to agree so they can pursue the purpose for which they are married. Two of a kind in Christ doesn't mean they're exactly the same personalities. Until you find an eternal purpose for your marriage, you are likely to suffer abuse and regrets. The couple with vision and purpose for their marriage will enjoy the ride, even if it's a roller coaster. But the ones without vision and purpose will suffer pains, even if it's a cruise. You must find purpose for your marriage to find peace in your home. You must find purpose for your marriage to find peace in your home. Now you must sit down this week or in the course of this month when things look okay. Even if it doesn't look okay, you, you initiate it. You know, cook the food that you want or say the things that she wants. And ask certain questions together. Document it. Questions like, why did God put us together as a couple? You say, you know, I've been thinking about this thing. You know, why, why, do you, why, why do you think God put us together? You'll be surprised. As individuals and as a couple, what has God called us to accomplish to further his purpose? Ask each other and write it down. What are our gifts and passions as individuals and as a couple? What are... What's, what's your own gift? What's my own gift? Ask one another. What specific, specific things can we do to create and maintain the kind of atmosphere we want to create in our home? Ask each other. What are our family values and how do we pass these values to our children? What challenges must we, what changes rather, must we make in our individual background to pursue our vision successfully together? Without a vision for the marriage, the couple may end in a ditch and may even perish. Because Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Is there a vision for your marriage? Do you have a purpose for your marriage? The two of a kind in Christ are not afraid of anything. Even death, for true love in Christ, is stronger than death. So Romans 16, where I read before, 3 and 4, Paul said, help me thank Priscilla and Aquila. They lay down their neck for my sake. They are not afraid of death because the purpose has been defined, has been issued. Any couple in Christ, in the pursuit of their purpose in Christ, have peace of mind even when things are not looking good. Any couple in Christ, in the pursuit of their purpose, know they are stronger together and will not pursue individual interests to the detriment of their common purpose. Aquila and Priscilla were two of a kind in Christ. And we must learn from them. The vital lesson this morning is to have a vision and a purpose for your marriage. The single brother is looking for a woman with profile. The single brother is not, should not be looking for a woman with profile, but the one with purpose. The single sister must not be looking for a man with good vibes, but the one with great vision. Are you in a mess of a marriage already? There is hope if you are willing to work at it. Leah was hated by the husband and ridiculed by her sister. Let God help you by opening your eyes to the purpose for the marriage. God doesn't make mistake. There is still a reason why he allowed it to otherwise you, you will have scattered there is a reason somehow maybe some lessons you have to learn maybe something because do you know 
Even though Jacob did not love Leah, Jesus came from Judah and Judah came from Leah. Genesis 29 verse 35 and she conceived again Genesis 29 35 and she conceived again and bore a son and she said now I will praise the Lord therefore she called his name Judah and left behind vision rooted in God brings together binds together in love and love of God helps the fulfillment of a vision let the Lord open your eyes to see the purpose for your marriage and your future will become bright and your home heaven on earth the missing link in many marriages is that they are, they are yet to find the purpose and there is no vision. For the unbeliever, the hope of glory for all times is the presence of Christ in, uh, in your lives and homes. Without Christ, you can be sure of crisis. Colossians 1.27, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you are not born again, you can write your vision statement down. If God is not in him, everything will scatter. It's a matter of time. Because money can bind it together. Your career cannot bind it together. At the end of the day, having done all, Jesus must be at the center in every home for peace. Leah decided to praise God when she had Judah and she got a peace of mind. Do you know that Leah took over from Rachel because Leah outlived Rachel and Jacob had no choice at that point. We do praise God this morning. For your marriage, it may not be perfect, but you can praise God. So God can open your eyes into what the vision and the purpose will be. Can we rise? When upon the billows you are tempted stars, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count any blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Let's approach his throne with thanksgiving. Let's praise him. Oh, I know things may not be working the way they should, but let's thank God. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Give God praise for your life, for your home. If you are single, thank God because that glorious home will soon be set up. If you are married and things are well, give God praise. If you are married and there are challenges, thank God because the future is a, is a glorious future. Just give him praise. Thank you, Father. Now I want you to really pray, pray and say, Father, Open my eyes to understand your will, your purpose, and counsel for me in marriage. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me know your will, your counsel, your purpose for me. Why am I brought together with my wife? Open my eyes. We know in part, but, but God can continue to reveal to us the entire purpose. And if you are single, tell the Almighty God to begin to open your eyes as you connect with your life partner. Finally, I want you to pray and say, Father, please let my marriage be used to expand your kingdom on earth and help me and my spouse to fulfill your counsel and purpose in Jesus' name. Priscilla and Aquila, their marriage was a blessing to the kingdom of God. Lord, use my marriage for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Help me and my, and my spouse, my wife, to fulfill your counsel and purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you listen to this message and you are not saved, I repeat one more time. It's when Christ is in a home that you are crisis free. Because even when there is crisis, he's the prince of peace. He will just say, peace be still. 
That's why I welcome you to please surrender your life. Surrender that marriage to the Lord. Give your life to him. Surrender everything to Jesus. And we take it from there. So if you are here, you want to give your life to Christ, just raise your hands up there. In the ushers, we move around and put a paper in your hand. If you are virtual, the media will flash a number. Make sure you contact us. Surrender to Christ and we take care of the crisis. Father Lord, we thank you. And if you are making that decision, it's just a simple prayer. When you raise your hand up, say, Lord Jesus, I'm raising my hand because I give my life to you today. I confess my sins and I repent of them. Please save my soul. Forgive me, O oh Lord, and help me. Help me. Help my marital life. Help me, Lord. If you pray that prayer, I can, I can assure you that Jesus is merciful. Merciful enough to forgive your sin and make you his own. My Lord and my God, I thank you for as many as are making this decision this morning. Father, please save their souls in the name of Jesus. Forgive their sins, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And for every one of us that are married, open our eyes to understand your will, your purpose, and your counsel for our marriage in the name of Jesus. For the singles, open their eyes ahead of time so that they get into marriage knowing clearly the vision, the purpose for which they are getting married. Do so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And use our lives and our home and marriages to expand your kingdom here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We are grateful, Lord, for the beginning of the last quarter, the year 2021. Please take us all the way, gloriously, triumphantly, to see the new year in joy, in peace, and in prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.